plug and ask some questions. Um, the topic tonight is post high school planning and careers. Um, I think the other, um, I'm gonna let in one of our panelists. Um, I think the other, uh, another way to say this is, is opportunities abound. I think that we are seeing more and more opportunities for Vermonters to, um, to get um, you know, post high school training and, um, and information about what is available to them in terms of both you know, traditional um, college and university, but also many, many opportunities for short-term training certificate, um, you know, great uh, opportunities for, for those as well. Um, I'm gonna introduce myself. My name is Susie Moakley. I am one of the school counselors at CVU and I am going to be mo monitoring the chat function tonight. And I'd like to um, introduce my colleague, Gavin. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Gavin Von Salidas and I am one of the school counselors at CVU as well. And we will get started here. And so um, we have uh, three panelists who have um, joined us this evening and we would like for them to um, give them a warm welcome and then we'll have them introduce themselves. And then we'll begin with our questions for the panelists. Uh, maybe Michael, would you like to introduce yourself first and then Tom and then Brandon, thank you all for coming. Sure, thanks for having us, Gavin. So uh, welcome everyone. My name is Mike Keough. I am the Director of Business Engagement uh, for the Community College Vermont Workforce Development Department. So I get to uh, travel around the state and work with companies from a variety of industries. And I work really closely with companies to better understand what their employment needs are, what types of jobs they have available, what are the skills required for these various jobs, and then to develop training programs uh, to support that effort. So I'm happy to be here and I'll hand it off to Tom. Well, thanks everybody. Thanks for having us. Looking forward to the conversation tonight. Uh, I'm Tom Cheney and I'm the executive director of a small nonprofit called Advanced Vermont. And our work is focused statewide. And really the thought is that uh, we do everything in our power to increase uh, the understanding of the importance of education and training after high school and all of the different pathways that help get you there. Uh, we do work in the policy world. We do work um, in the communications world and, and we work with data. Um, but a big thing we'll talk about a little bit tonight is uh, a tool that we've created called myfuturevt.org, which is a career and education resource hub um, that's free for youth and adults exploring uh, their life's journey. So over to you, Brandon. Thanks, Tom. Uh, my name is Brandon Kennedy. I'm one of the admission folks for Vermont State University. I work at the Castleton campus. I'm our visit coordinator, but I've also been an admission counselor. And I'm excited to talk to you all about the opportunities of continuing your education with, a, with an awesome public institution. Thank you all. And so we're, we have about uh, six to seven questions that we'd like to ask you all. And then at the end of, after we've answered those questions, we'll give time for um, individuals out in the audience to ask their questions if they have of any that are of interest. And I think Susie, you'll be monitoring that. So if you ask your questions as we're going through, please know that we will get to them um, at the end of um, us asking the questions. And so the first question that we have for you is, why should students consider pursuing education and training after high school? And maybe we can just uh, popcorn. I'm happy to start the popcorn here. Um, so I would say there's a couple of reasons that really can boil be boiled down to one sentence. Your future depends on it and so does Vermont's. Uh, so I'll take that last part first. You're part of something really big. The state has a goal that by 2025, 70% of Vermonters will have some sort of education and training after high school um, that brings value to their careers, right? So it's not a random number, it's based on the needs of employers uh, in Vermont. So simply put, they need skills that are developed um, only if you continue your learning after high school in some form. And as you consider the next steps, um, consider that you're gonna enter Vermont's workforce and you'll be, in, you'll be powering our state and our economy. Um, and so your success is the collective success of everyone on this phone and everyone in Vermont. But it's also really important to you as an individual, and I boil it down to three reasons. Uh, one, pursuing education and training after high school is investment in yourself. Um, 
and in your own dreams, right? It quite literally allows you to define your own success. Uh, number two, it, it grants you access to more job opportunities. Um, all of the most promising jobs in Vermont require some kind of education and training that goes beyond your high school diploma. And 72% require a credential, a post high school credential, like an apprenticeship, a certificate, a degree. Um, and, and then three, education and training simply unlocks higher wages um, and, and allows you to um, live the lifestyle that you choose to live. So those are those are my quick hits. Those are really good points. You know, and Tom, I think you hit on something really important is that of the high wage, high growth uh, jobs available in Vermont, 100% of them are requiring some kind of post-secondary credential. And then if we just look at the job market uh, nationally, 70% are requiring some kind of post-secondary credential. The, the challenge that I see now too, and why it's so important is that the job market is becoming increasingly more competitive. So, you know, we're hearing it's a tight labor market and we have all these jobs available, but what's happening is that now we're seeing uh, more remote jobs be available. And what we're, what's happening is now we're competing uh, nationally and sometimes globally for that position that's right across the street. So the, the, the market, the competition in the market has, has increased significantly. Um, you know, something else I often think about is why would, why would someone hire me, right? And this took me a long time to kind of figure out because when I, when I came out of high school, I'd never owned a business. I had not really worked in a business in any meaningful way. And, and so I got to thinking about the business owner, right? So you own your own company, and now let's say you need to hire an app developer to create an app for your company. And you're going to, so you're going to pay somebody $80,000, $100,000, okay, out of your own pocket. Who would you hire, right? Would you hire somebody without any training, without a degree? Or would you hire somebody that at least went to a software coding boot camp or earned a credential in, um, in coding? You, there's a lot of investment uh, that goes into employment. So I think the biggest question you can ask yourself is why would somebody hire me? And then like Tom said, you know, you really need to just, in, we, we need to invest in ourselves. And uh, so that's my, that's my two cents on that. I don't know if I can add much more to what you guys said. You're the experts. I mean, that's great. But, um, you know, speaking from the higher education lens, um, you know, I think it also shows employers that you're able to commit to something, um, you know, taking the time to go through an apprenticeship program, taking the time to go through an associate's degree, a certificate or a, a you know, a bachelor's degree or beyond shows that you are committed to something and, you know, that you're going to gain skills outside of, you know, what th those employers might teach you. We talk a lot, um, you know, here at Vermont State University about the opportunities that students get from, you know, having a well-rounded liberal arts education. Um, and a liberal arts education really gives folks the opportunities to, you know, be employable individuals and it gives them critical thinking skills. It allows them the skills they need to, um, you know, articulate themselves, work as a team player, you know, have leadership skills. So, you know, in addition to formalized training, Showing commitment to, you know, a significant amount of time, a significant amount of money. Also, um, you know, just gaining those skills are going to be really critical for your future moving forward, for sure. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of folks think about it like this way, um, you know, the a bachelor's degree or an associate's degree or some sort of credential is really your ticket into the job market. You know, if you look, if you go on any job search site, you know, they're going to ask for some sort of experience credentials. And so by gaining education, you're going to be able to show that you have those skills and those credentials to do so. Great responses. Thank you. If you see me on my phone at times, it's because um, there are um, families and students who are asking for the uh, Zoom code. And so I am texting and not texting, emailing from my phone. So thanks for your patience. And I am trying to manage those emails as well. So I am <laughs> I'm, right. I'm toggling back and forth. All right, we're on it. And so the next question is, how does a high school student learn more about training and work opportunities in Vermont if they don't plan on pursuing a four-year degree? And I think this is also something that we as school counselors are really always itching for more information on. Um, and so any information on that would be greatly appreciated. 
Before Advanced Vermont created My Future VT, this was a challenging question, <laughs> a very challenging question. So I might defer to Tom just to give him a platform to talk about that, and I can, I can follow up. Uh, sure, and I appreciate that. Um, so, so what Mike's referring to is um, is myfuturevt.org, and as I mentioned before, it's a career and education resource hub that has in one place. Uh, really, I think all, or certainly close to all the information you need to start exploring and planning your career and education journey. So that includes growing, um, growing databases that allow you to explore Vermont's careers, um, the in-state education and training programs um, that are aligned with those careers, um, and, and those programs that are offered from your technical center uh, to a college or university. Um, and that includes apprenticeships and certificates. And then it also has a whole host of resources that help you along the way in your journey, um, whether it's additional information and, and things, but also connecting you with the real life supports. Um, we all know that a, a website can only go so far. We do need people who can help us, whether it's your school counselors, whether it's the Vermont Department of Labor um, or others who can help you along the way. Um, but I just say, you know, it really is, overwhelming. Um, and, and like it or not, we live in a world where college pathways are much more understood um, and sometimes valued than other pathways. So on My Future VT, we really try to show you all of the different pathways and the value that they all bring. Because um, the truth is that a, a certificate program, apprenticeship, um, they lead or industry recognized certifications are incredibly valuable. Um, they're often aligned with um, development of career skills shorter and cheaper. Um, so we really do try to have all of the different career and education pathways uh, in this one place in a really accessible way. And and kudos to Mike for being a, a huge help in bringing that site up to speed in the last few years. Yeah, no, it you know it takes a village, right, Tom? It's just um, it's it's a complex network out there. You know, if you looked at at what post-secondary options looked like 20 years ago, it was pretty narrow and defined. And, it, and so um, even at CCV, if you looked at what we were offering even 10 years ago, it was associate degrees and certificate programs. And fast forward to today, and we have industry recognized credentials, digital badges, um, um, certifications, um, nested credentials, apprenticeships. I mean, it runs the gamut. And so, and in part, I think there's two reasons for that. One, I don't think of education as a finite experience, right? I don't, I think education is a lifelong pursuit. Your jobs will change over time. You need to always think about, you know, how do I grow and expand and, and be marketable? Um, but also, how do I enter the job market now? How do I get in now, get in early, see if it's something I'm interested in? Um, I have several degrees and one of, I was really close and I want to do credits from a from an accounting degree before I realized I didn't want to become an accountant. And so uh, we're really focused a lot on getting you the, the skills and the, and the certifications you need uh, to start in a, in a career and start to see if it's a good fit for you. And if it's not, you know, you're out, you know, maybe, you know, a semester's worth of work, but that those, those, th that semester's worth of work earned you a credential, it goes on your resume and you keep that forever. And I, I fervently believe that knowledge and skill uh, always has value. Um, so as far as like, where do you go? Um, first, I would say even just at CCV, it can be a complex web. So, you know, if you came to CCV or uh, Vermont State University, you can talk to an admissions counselor about the options that are available to you, what your goals are, and they'll help sort of make that, that marriage happen. You also, um, in your region, every region has a Department of Labor office. And I would always recommend going to your local Department of Labor. They have career assessments and they have money sometimes available to help you pay for certifications and credentials. So there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a I mean, it's a huge list of, of resources. There's, it's a community, um, but I would definitely recommend going to your local colleges, uh, talking to Department of Labor and checking out the uh, My Future VT website. Absolutely. And then, you know, even when you get to the colleges, we have, you know, a number of resources in our own web to help people find, you know, credentials and what the career avenues are. Um, you know, Mike, you mentioned how continuing your education is so important. There's so many careers that require that, you know, think about your teachers, they have to take 
they have to go to summer school <laughs> because they have to, you know, continue to continue their education. Um, you know, doctors, you know, all sorts of different people as, as we progress as a society, we need to learn more and we need to, you know, knowledge is the saying knowledge is power is really true. You know, the more information you have, the more well-informed decisions you can make, I think. And, you know, my biggest advice for all of you that are listening and thinking like, how do I start this journey is just ask, you know, go to your school counseling office. They're a great place to start. Um, you know, stop at a local college. The great thing about Vermont is we have a lot of colleges right at your front doors on a lot of your cases. Um, you know, whether it's at Vermont State University, whether it's at CCV or, you know, the University of Vermont going and asking these questions. I also think it doesn't hurt to, you know, if you see someone in your community that you kind of aspire to have a similar career, talk to them about how they got there. You know, a lot of people have really unique journeys and, you know, not everyone's journey starts at, you know, X, Y, and Z. I, I, you know, I like to give myself as an example. I studied photography and graphic design and, as my undergraduate degree. And now I work in college admissions, which like don't necessarily correlate, but the skills I learned helped get me here and, you know, helped open my, my eyes to a whole industry that as a high school student, I would have never known existed. And, you know, I think it's really helpful to just ask and people in the industry, in any industry for that matter, want to share their secrets like they they want to say oh yeah you should take this course or do you know if you're interested in computer programming you should we lost brandon but i he was on to something that was just right on i mean i think that you we all know that uh there, there are great resources out there and people we can talk to there's folks in our lives who have been through this journey before and if we can seek them out they like to share their secrets as brandon said are you back do you want to continue i am did i freeze oh gosh it was great Sorry. <laughs> my, my technology is like really throwing me for a loop tonight um yeah i think you tom i caught the very tail end of what you were just saying and like yeah, you know, it's funny, there's always the like the saying industry secrets, but like no secret is an industry secret. If we can like, if people can share how they're successful, they're gonna wanna share how they're successful in, in most cases, I should say, anyway. So definitely don't be shy to ask. One second, we, I think um, we're still getting some emails in. So we're, um, Susie and I are trying to monitor that too. And so our next question is, is there a correlation between years of training and education and salary? Yes. I, I mean, uh, and it's, this is a little bit charged because correlation doesn't always denote causation, but uh, there is absolutely correlation. Um, at a very basic level, I mean, you can go online and look up the statistics of median salary based on educational attainment. Uh, it's really easy to find. Generally speaking, someone with a master's degree is going to earn, you know, about double that of somebody with a high school diploma. Um, what was really interesting, though, is when I look at the unemployment rates of people with different uh, educational levels. And so, uh, you know, right now we have historically low unemployment, but people with a high school diploma only are unemployed at twice the rate as those with a bachelor's degree. So basically there's twice as many unemployed people with a high school diploma relative to the number of unemployed people with a bachelor's degree. So, um, so yeah, there's absolutely correlation. People with um, advanced knowledge and skills are in demand. I also like to think about it in the sense of like, organizations want to get the most value from their from their community members right and so by you know showing that you've invested in your future you know putting that in that upfront investment up an employer is going to pay you back in that you know it's um we find that you know and this is a great question because a lot of students now are very cost conscious when we're thinking about our future, right? Like, and as you all should be for, for the students on the line, you should be thinking about what your education is going to cost you and what your credentials are gonna cost you because there's a lot of really affordable options out there. And there's also a lot of really expensive options out there. But, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, having those credentials, having the skills or growing your skills is gonna really lead to you having more, um, 
you know, more salary on the on the tail end. Um, you know, I think about myself, if I were a business owner, kind of like what you said, Mike, you know, do you want to have somebody who has no skills? You know, are you going to pay them entry level? Or do you have somebody that has more skills that can do more for you that can enhance your business? And, you know, do more, you're going to pay them more. Um, you know, I, we, th I, this question also kind of comes up a lot with like, programs like health careers, you know, you, we, um, you know, a lot of people ask like, oh, why is it so hard to get into a nursing program? Or why is it so hard to get into, you know, dental hygiene? Or why does it take eight years of school for me to become a doctor? And like, the reason for that is, when you go to the hospital, you want the best, most qualified person working on you, right? Like, you don't want me, <laughs> who took no science classes, uh, you know, for my undergraduate degree, drawing your blood, you wouldn't like that. I can, I can nearly guarantee it. Um, I could probably do it. I could make it work. Right. But like you wouldn't as a patient would not have a, have a positive experience. So like having those credentials, gaining more knowledge, you know, a nurse is going to get paid way more than what I would get paid in a hospital if I were to go to a hospital. So I, I think about it that way too. Yeah. I would just say there's not a, like a, you know, so if you look at the stats, and it's very easy to find co comparing college level degrees, there's just there's more data on that. But um, I, I pulled some numbers uh, this evening, actually. Um, and in Vermont, if you have a graduate degree, so something beyond college, um, over 40 years, you're likely to make over a million dollars more than somebody with just a high school diploma. Um, about You make about half of that more, so about $500,000. Um, more than some of the high school diploma if you have a bachelor's degree. But I want to caution you, just because it's more years doesn't necessarily mean for sure that you're going to make more money. A lot of it also has to do with what kind of education are you getting and how transferable is it? So with a bachelor's degree, as an example, that's relatively what we'd call transferable. So there's there's an assumption generally in our culture and our society that if you have a bachelor's degree, you could apply that into a lot of different um, avenues, right? I think Brandon and Mike also already touched on that today, right? Um, however, if you have a certificate, it might be, um, you know, like a graphic design certificate. Well, that's a certificate in showing that you know graphic design really well. And that is going to allow you to have a really healthy salary in um, through a graphic design career, uh, one that rivals, if not is better than the average salary for someone who has a bachelor's degree. Um, however, the value, if you were to go to a different industry, might might be a little bit smaller. Um, so think about it that way, that it really depends on what credential you have and what it's in and what industry. I pulled some of the numbers on the most promising careers in Vermont. I think we'll be talking more about those as we go. Um, but it's, you know, I looked at the certificate program, uh, the, the jobs that only require a certificate um, rather than a bachelor's or a, an associate degree. And they make uh, as, as much as the average bachelor's degree in Vermont, which is about $50,000 or more. So there, it really does depend what you're looking at, but, but absolutely you need more education and training after high school. And that will result into more dollars. Great, thank you. And Tom, that segues into our next question because the next question is what are the most needed jobs in Vermont and what is expected in the years to come in the state and even nationally? That's a, this is another tough question. Uh, so I think there's two there's two pieces to this. There are the jobs that are in demand and needed right now, and there's the jobs that are going to be in demand and needed in the future. And so when you talk about what's expected to come, it's really challenging. You know, I think about uh, drone operators, um, cloud architects, um, uh, podcast producers. You know what these all have in common? They're jobs that didn't exist ten years ago. And research shows that uh, 85, 85 percent of the jobs that are going to exist in 2030 have not yet been invented yet. And so the job is almost secondary to the industry in your passion. And this is just my own soapbox piece, so bear with me. Um, but I think about industries in technology, education, healthcare, finance, and manufacturing. These are the major growth sectors that I'm seeing nationally and areas that I would encourage people to focus in. Now let's, and, and all of these industries have support roles. They have a marketing department and a finance and accounting department. So 
So the jobs themselves are going to change over time. This is another reason why it's going to be so important uh, to, to really continue your education, get new skills um, for, you know, for the most new and in-demand uh, jobs. You know, we have uh, a growing number of uh, software developers and software coders that are needed. And now we're seeing more software coding trainings and boot camps pop up uh, to, to meet that demand now. Um, I'm even seeing a lot of career changers move into software coding from other industries because it's a it's a new passion, it's a new idea, it pays really well, um, and all that good stuff. So, so it's it, it's tough to say what jobs are going to be in demand. And again, I, I I have a passion for education, and so in fact, my job did not exist ten years ago. Um, but my passion was in education. I focused on how to help others. You know find themselves with education and I've been able to build a career around it. So there it is. Yeah, and I think it's a really good point that you make, you make, you make Mike, um, because we don't know what the jobs are for sure in the next 10, 15 years, um, or certainly, you know, throughout your career, you're going to have so, there's gonna be so many new jobs created. And the job that you start in in the career you start in, even if you finish in that same career, that job's probably going to look pretty different. Um, but there is a list that the um, that the Vermont Department of Labor has pulled together with uh, an organization called the McClure Foundation, which does its best guess at determining what the most promising jobs are in the state over the next 10 years. And they create this list called um, the most promising jobs in Vermont. So they can anticipate, and they are sure to note this too, uh, that they can anticipate what new jobs will be created. Um, but what they know is that in professions that already exist, there is a lot of growth in certain ones. And so they identify 54 um, jobs in the state. Um, and if you're, you know, and as you're thinking about these jobs, um, the, the details on them are um, 500 openings and they pay above the state median wage, which is $22.55 an hour, um, which is about $47,000 a year. So all these jobs will make you $47,000 or more a year. Um, and 500 openings is, is quite a bit in a small state like Vermont. Um, so, when you look at these, uh, they're uh, from computers to, sorry, from, no computer jobs, from teachers to computer system administrators to carpenters to accountants. And they have uh, all combined out of these careers, 81,650 openings over the next 10 years. So these are the places to look if you're looking for a place where there's a lot of opportunity. Um, the top four jobs, we're gonna need, uh, almost 4,500 nurses, uh, 7,800 teachers and special educators, um, 5,500 carpenters, and uh, over 5,000 bookkeepers and accounting clerks. So those are the top four jobs. Um, but Tom, can, Tom yeah. what I like about that handout, and we do have those, uh, we have uh, pamphlets in the Direction Center, we have stacks of them. So just what Tom is talking about is available um, to hand out at CVU. But I like the color coding. So it's based on like what you're interested in. If you like to work with your hands, they'll list out those top careers. If you like to work with, um, with people, it will list out the top careers. So it's a real user-friendly guide that's available in the Direction Center for those that are interested. And on My Future VT, we've, we've put an electronic form and there's some additional information that you can get. So if you go to uh, My Future VT and then search careers, you'll come to a database. And in that database, there's a filter and on that filter, you can filter for um, the high pay, high demand jobs in the state. You can also see a little overlay on each of the pictures, career pictures that says high pay, high demand. And those are the jobs um, that I'm talking about. So you can see them both in paper and electronic form. Wonderful, thank you. So say you have a career interest already in mind, are there steps that you can take in high school to get a head start? I see a lot of nodding, which is great. For but sure. There's for sure so many pathways, things that you can, cool things you can do as a high school student to prepare yourself for your future. Um, you know, I think from the college or from the from the secondary post-secondary education world, we're think we're looking at like 
how are you preparing yourself for college or for continuing your education? And by that, we look at academic rigor and we look at, you know, what is your curriculum pathway? Um, you know, when I think about students that are looking to, you know, prepare themselves for their future, a lot of them are going to tech centers, you know, they're going and actually having some experience in the industry, whether it be, you know, if you're interested in studying automotive, going to an automotive tech center program is a great place to start. Um, if you're interested in doing, going into nursing or the medical field, doing an allied health, I mean, that's a, like, kind of hits the nail right on the head, right? Of like, how can I get more specialized while I'm in high school? That's, going to a specialized high school in that. Um, but there's other ways too that like that colleges and universities um, love to see and that's students getting involved in their community and getting involved through whether it be community action, through volunteerism, whether it be through, um, you know, doing an internship. A lot of, you know, I talk to a lot of high school juniors and seniors that are like, oh yeah, senior year is going to be great. I'm going to take, you know, three classes and then I have the rest of the day off and I'm like, that's awesome. Go find an internship, you know, make the most of your time of your free time, um, you know, and do an internship. It doesn't have to be a change the world internship where you're, you know, doing it for the whole year, you know, try it out. If you're thinking, Hey, I want to go into the trades, you know, work with your school counselor or work with, you know, family friends or someone to do an internship with a general contractor, with a plumber, with an electrician, with an HVAC tech, like you can do that all throughout the year in theory and like experience so many different industries at a really low risk. Um, you know, as a high school student, you likely have a lot of support tools where like you can, you know, you're not having to depend on a paycheck where if you go in and, you know, start working with a general contractor doing like general construction and you're like, man, this is not for me, but I know I want to do something with my hands. I'm going to try being a plumber or an HVAC tech, you could easily switch, you know, with an internship while you're a high school student versus someone like me, who's out of high school, out of college and says, oh, I want to try and be something totally different. There's some risk that comes with that. Um, and so, you know, I think that's a really great way to get, get involved and, and prepare yourself. Um, you know, I think also doing some career exploration, you know, going to colleges and universities, searching, asking questions, thinking about things. I know, you know, my, the, my colleagues here on the call can probably talk more about like what the Department of Labor has for opportunities for you, what like CCV has, but, you know, other ways you can get it, um, some experience or exposure to different careers and industries, maybe take a dual enrollment class, um, whether it be at the Community College of Vermont or through Vermont State University over the summer at UVM. Um, you know, doing, taking a college class on psychology can really set you up to know, like, can I see myself working in the psychology industry or in the human services industry or something like that? Um, so you absolutely have a lot of options and a lot of them come with very little risk or, you know, high at very high stakes, I would say. Yeah, I, I, I just, I just, I just want to say I agree. I agree, Brandon. You hit it on the head, and I think I would even expand on the internship idea because I, I think when I first left high school, my thought of what internship was was very formal, structured, and tied to something else. And it, and it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. I, th I, I would say I could, I, th I think networking, whether it's um, an internship, a job shadow, an informational interview. Um, being, if you go, and I guarantee you this, I would guarantee it. If you go to a professional and you say, look, I'm interested in becoming an accountant. Okay. And so I go to my local CPA and I, and I'm 17, 18 years old. And like, I really want this. How do I, that person will absolutely take me under their wing and likely hire me. They'll tell me where to go to school. And, and in part, this works because not a lot of people do it. And this is how I know it's, it's so rare because not enough young people have the, um, you know, the knowledge of the expertise to, to go out and do that. But I would definitely encourage and, and you can do it through, you know, a college counselor, you can do it through the Department of Labor and help and have them actually support you in that, in that networking effort. But uh, I can't say enough for how important networking is. Um, and then, of course, dual enrollment, early college, there's lots of ways to engage. Again, my, what I thought college was prior to going to college, um, was not what college was. Um, it was it was it was less about me just 
rote memorization and more about me engaging in my learning and exploring and, 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 and deepening my understanding and being and owning my education. It was a really amazing experience. So, um, so yeah, I, I guess I'm just saying yes to everything Brandon said. One thing I'll add is we do have a class at CVU called Academic Internship and students can um, sign up for that class and they can get English credit and they also get guidance with um, finding an internship. And then they spend the second half of the year going out and doing that. So great opportunity right at CVU to get involved in um, just what Brandon and Mike are talking about. That's a no brainer. You, you have to, whoever is listening, you have to take that. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll mention as an example, um, years ago, I worked in the state house uh, and I had an intern who uh, was in high school and came up uh, from down in Putney and spent uh, some time with us as, as an intern. And she's running Becca Ballin's campaign for governor and is tremendous uh, con contributor to our state. And, and she had the wherewithal and the ability to take an internship to get started early um, and has had a tremendous career so far. Um, just to build on a couple more things. Uh, so, we talked about dual enrollment early college. Just as a reminder, you get two free credits as a junior or senior, or two free courses as a junior or senior uh, for dual enrollment. So this is free college for you, right? This is uh, something you definitely should try to take advantage of. And then early college is you get to actually, you know, do that first year of college while you're still in high school, which is is tremendous as well. And the McClure Foundation we mentioned before has an early college promise. So that they will um, support your, uh, I think you get a stipend in that in that year to support books and fees and things like that as a senior, but it's, they're also going to pay for your second year. Um, so when you graduate as a senior, you can go to CCV and and in well, your one year out of high school, you can have an associate degree, and that associate degree can easily transfer into the state colleges, into UVM, or many many other institutions if you want to continue to pursue your degree, or you could go to early college and earn a, a certificate. Um, and there's additional funding to support that as well. Um, so tremendous opportunities with early college. Uh, the other thing is that if uh, you go to CTE, there's a um, dual enrollment equivalent for CTE called Fast Forward, where you can earn college credit while being in CTE. Um, so to get information on all the things we talked about, there actually is a tab on myfuturevt.org that's that says um, if you get the the get help um, or actually what is it called now I'm blanking on it get support not get help and right underneath that it'll say uh, resources uh, for high schoolers and it actually summarizes pretty much everything that we just talked about and links you to additional information. Thank you and in uh, all of your responses in a way was answering our uh, next question. And so if people want to um, dive deeper into it, we can, but if it feels like we already answered it, that's okay. And the question was, say you have no idea what you would like to do after high school. Are there resources to help you learn more about yourself and what's possible? Yeah, I would, I think we might've mentioned this earlier too. I would take a career interest quiz. Um, and we have one of those on myfuturevt.org, should be able to find it in our career section pretty easily, but you can find these elsewhere. Um, and these uh, quizzes allow you to get a sense of, uh, do you like to work with your hands? Are you analytical? Um, what makes you tick? There's, we also have a quiz that's a personality quiz that can also help you kind of line up um, what personality traits you have with a career. Uh, on My Future VT, as an example, uh, in our career database, you can search by, um, you know, what that uh, what comes out from your quiz, right? So it'll tell you what kind of person you are or what, whether you like to use your hands. They're called Holland codes. Um, and you can actually search those uh, in our database and then find the careers that align with that. Uh, and then the education training programs that align with those, with those careers. Um, but I would just say, you know, once you have a sense of that, what your career interests are, dig into some of those careers, um, whether it's on my future VT or not. Um, and just learn more about the job. See what daily tasks are associated, what skills are required. Um, you know, this can be kind of a laid back process um, and I, I wouldn't freak out about it too much. Uh, it should be fun. You should be, you know, kind of on an ex exploration. 
Um, and there's a detailed, of course, on my future VT, we have a, a detailed career guide that would give you kind of the one, two, three, four uh, steps that we would recommend. So you can find that on the site too and, and follow that um, as part of your journey. And kind of to piggyback off of what Tom was just saying, but on the college level is, you know, this is something that I've been telling a lot of or talking to a lot of students about is, um, you know, your college degree doesn't necessarily equate to your career. A lot of students kind of we have this stigma that, you know, whatever I major in in college is going to be what I'm doing as a career. And in many, you know, and in some cases, that is absolutely the case when it comes to like technical training or more career oriented degrees. But, you know, just because you have a, um, you know, a passion for psychology doesn't mean you're going to be a psychologist, you know, doesn't mean that you're going to have to, you know, work at work in, you know, understanding how the human brain works for the rest of your life. You know, you can absolutely go into a million different avenues. Um, you know, I think what we've talked a lot about, and hopefully you all, it's probably been, you know, drilled right into your head now is that, you know, more education is just going to offer you more opportunity. And if you have a more generalized approach to things, but things that you love, they're going to come naturally to you and you're going to just kind of flourish in that. Um, you know, I think it's, it's okay to be honest with yourself that if you're a, you know, an arts oriented student and you love the arts, why not major in, in an art degree? And then, you know, take those art skills and those peripheral learning skills that you're, you're getting, you know, critical thinking, leadership, you know, creativity outside the box, you know, all those things that come from the arts, take that into a business or an organization and make an impact there. Um, you know, I think so much of your education is, or your outcome from your education is what you make of your education. So if you really dive into it, if it comes naturally to you, if you're passionate about it, you're going to have um, a more positive outcome. Um, so don't, you know, and, and like what Tom said, this should be fun. Don't feel like, you know, I need to pick my career right now because if I don't, I'm going to be, you know, struggling for the rest of my life. You know, take some time, do a lot of self-reflection, ask a lot of questions, you know, try things. Don't be afraid to try things, fail, and then learn from those failures which that's like a, whoa, we got deep there just for a second. But, um, you know, that's, yeah, it's, it's kind of exciting the time that you're in and just like hold on to it and really dive into it. And, and I, I like the idea of academic exploration, this, this space where you can explore lots of different skills and it all adds to the, the, the potpourri that is you. I used to work on Wall Street a long time ago and the president of the firm was a psychology major, had a psychology degree. And he told me, he said, Mike, he was the one that made me go back to college. And um, he said, if you're going to be successful in business, you need to have a fundamental and deep understanding of human behavior. And so he was able to parlay that psychology degree into a very successful uh, brokerage firm on Wall Street. So um, your skills are, are, are um, what you make of them, I suppose. I have yeah, a I follow up question. Oh, go ahead, Tom. I was just going to say, just to tie it a bow here, perhaps, or take it in a slightly different direction, whichever one happens, um, but is that there, there really is no straight line. And I think that's kind of what we've been talking about. There's no straight line to your current education journey. And that's good. And that's okay. It's not so simple that you just go to college, you know exactly what you want to do, and then you get the job that you assume that you you were going to have in, as an 18-year-old that you get it when you're 24. Um, there are so many different pathways, and you can stack them. So just one concept that I think is really important to think about, particularly when we're thinking about um, are the options other than college, is that you can take a certificate here in graphic design and then a certificate here with coding, and you combine those together, and that's a super package, right? Um, and it allows you to explore. So maybe I'm interested in this the graphic design thing, and as I'm going through it, I realize, well, I'd love to do graphic design and create my own website at the same time. Boy, wouldn't that be really helpful? And then now you've got a package that can be uh, makes you much more versatile, uh, much more marketable. And, and then also, in a lot of cases, gives you a step for whatever that next credential is, because often you can kind of parlay that into um, credit or into, um, you know, expertise to help you earn that next credential. So you stack these credentials in different ways. It has a lot of value. Um, and, and so there's no straight line and there's no one way to do this. My quick follow-up question was, um, I find that working with some of the high school students, um, the ninth and 10th graders are building foundational skills and they're pretty um, 
dictated about the classes they're going to take. They don't have the opportunity for dual enrollment and some of the internship um, opportunities because of their age. Um, and, and they're often looking for, um, you know, exploration. So I know, Tom, you mentioned some of the inter interest inventories. Does anybody have other ideas about the younger years in high school and how they can um, explore um, their, who they are, their interests, um, and sort of get excited about what's coming? I would just say, I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't do a job shadow. So um, in your community, there's, there's, sub, there's a particular um, organization or business that really excites you, uh, you can call them up and, and say, hey, can I swing by for a couple hours, uh, talk with you or one of your colleagues and maybe get a tour of the facility uh, or the business. Maybe I can spend a day. Um, maybe I can do a ride along, you know, say it's a, it's a police, you want to be a police officer as an example. Um, so that's one thing that came to mind for me and I'll let the others add. Yeah, I mean, I think that the the process is the same. Uh, maybe just how it's applied is a little bit different. So when I was fourteen, I had I, I worked as a day camp counselor in the summers, and then uh, during the school year after work, I would work as a as a a bagger for a little Italian grocery store, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot about leadership. I learned that I don't want to work in retail. I learned that um, you know I learned how to communicate better. I, I just, I just started to grow into myself and get a better sense of who I was and, um, and what I wanted out of life. And that's changed. It changes all the time. You know, it's changing every day. So I think embracing the change and any skill that you can develop now is going to have value in the future. So there's, there, you're not going to waste your time by, the only time you're going to waste your time is by not exploring, not engaging, not doing anything. Yeah, and I don't know if I have much to add other than, you know, look to your peers. If you can't, you know, talk to your older classmates, see what those high school seniors are doing for experiences and ask them how it's going. Um, you know, getting having, I think a lot about networking as more like community oriented. So sometimes when we think about networking, we're like, oh man, it's going to a social and like I have to talk and like give out my business card and do all this formal stuff. But like networking with your your you all as high school students are networking all the time. You're talking to your friends, you're talking to your peers, you know, ask them how they're how that internship is going. What's it like to, um, you know, to balance going to work after going to school all day? You know, like ask them about those things and I'm sure they'll they'll share with you. Um, and, you know, if I can give any advice when I think about, you know, a high school, you know, freshman or sophomore that's, you know, you're more restricted in your classes, you're probably like trying to grow as a high schooler, you might not be taking your academics so, so seriously, because high school or college is like, you know, your future is years away, you're like, ah, I just want to get through freshman and sophomore year, take those years seriously, because they matter. Um, you know, your your four years of high school education, really matters and if you invest your time now you know laying the foundation for you to take you know a strong taking math class seriously so that you can maybe get to that ap calc class which then is going to allow you to earn college credit which then is going to allow you to like you're going to have this ripple effect um so if you take you know if you take your education early on seriously you're also probably going to have more flexibility when it comes to those um, exploratory years, your junior and senior year of high school, too. I would just underscore, I think all that's right. I have nothing to, to add specific to that, but just to underscore, um, right, get a job. You know, think about getting a part-time job or a summer opportunity. Um, I had just personally wonderful, wonderful experiences working part-time throughout high school. Um, and think about the folks that you're interacting with, again, to the point about you know, talking to your peers and others, talk to your boss, talk to your coach, talk to your favorite teacher, talk to maybe not your favorite teacher, but they had a, you think they have an interesting path, you know, talk to those around you and they really will be willing to share. Great. Thank you, everyone. Um, we have 10 minutes left and we um, because there are some people who are here in the Zoom and then there are some people and families uh, watching this through YouTube, um, we might not have as many questions as anticipated. But the one question that we have um, um, is, 
is there assistance to help me in my educational pursuits? And Tom, you um, talked a little bit about this um, with the early college program. Um, yeah. I can chime in, you know, from the college point of view, there's a lot of support for you to, you know, continue your education. Most colleges and universities offer merit scholarship, which is kind of why I like to harp on the idea that all four years of high school matter, the stronger your academic performance, um, you know, the more demonstrated success you're, you're going to show to colleges and universities and the more they're going to want you in their community. So they're probably going to hand you a higher merit-based scholarship. Um, you know, the state of Vermont has also recently given or, you know, helped support a lot of um, higher education institution programs specifically, you know, um, for the Vermont State Colleges, the state had given some grant funding to us for critical occupations. These were for students in nursing fields, students in early childhood education, um, you know, the education field in um, the trades where you can go to school for, for very affordably, um, you know, or next to nothing. Uh, also, I, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, plug VSAC. You know, our friends over at VSAC, the Vermont Student Assistance Corporation, there are a ton of scholarships for students just waiting for high school seniors to fill out that application and submit them um, and apply for them. There's a lot of opportunity. People, you know, we as a society and we as a community, this community of Vermont really wants to lift up our young people. You know, we are looking for young people to come to our state not just come for four years of education, but stay and make a life and make a you know family and continue to grow our community and then in trickle grow our economy. So there's a lot of investment into you as a young person and a lot of enticing reasons for you to stay and pursue education. Um, you know, also uh, not so shameless plug, but a plug for Vermont State University. We just you know dropped our tuition rate by 15% because the state of Vermont wants high school students and wants people of Vermont, like Tom was saying, 70% of Vermonters to continue their education in some capacity. Um, and Vermont State University is this really cool organization where it's now all of the small public schools. Uh oh, I might be frozen. Oh no, am I frozen? We can still hear you though. Oh, cool, great. At least you can hear me. You don't have to see me moving. I'm, I'm, probably getting up on my soapbox so you're seeing my hands moving about. I'm getting excited with this conversation. But um, Vermont State University is this really cool organization that is, you know, really has three pillars. We have traditional brick and mortar schooling and education where that's where you can go to a residential campus and earn a two-year or a four-year degree. We have a completely online division where you can learn anywhere in the world, wherever you're at, whether you're working full-time or working part-time, you can, can have really flexible education in that realm. And then we have workforce development. And that's where we're growing our certificate programs, our apprenticeship opportunities, and just ways that we, as a public state institution, so this is funded is partially funded through the state of Vermont, you know, um, is trying to funnel back into the workforce and workforce development. So like, you know, there is no shortage of opportunity for funding for you. Um, you know, as a Vermont student for next year, you can go to Vermont, any Vermont State University campus for less than $10,000 in tuition, which is pretty awesome. Um, and so in, it might not be a large scholarship coming from Vermont State University, but it's a really affordable price tag. So that's something to, th to think about too. And then of course CCV, I can't like, we can't not plug CCV either. And I can let Mike talk more about CCV, but. Sure, no, thanks. I, I You're spot on, Brandon. Um, I think what I would add just a personal story is that uh, I'm a first generation college student. So immigrant family, uh, no one in my family ever had a college degree. So I really didn't know what to expect. I only knew what I had heard uh, growing up and it was college, you're on your own. You gotta do it yourself. And I was unsuccessful my first semester because one reason, I didn't ask for help. So as far as like, is there assistance available? There's assistance all over. You just need to have the, the, the internal fortitude to, to go out and ask for it. But I do wanna plug um, that Vermont State University and Community College of Vermont has partnered on a five-year program with Vocational Rehabilitation, a VR system, now known as Higher Ability Vermont. And these are people um, statewide that work with people with disabilities. And that term disability is used quite broadly, so bear with me. But, um, but if you're a Vermonter, 16 plus, 
we're really focused on developing a career pathway for you, getting you into the workplace today, finding you those job um, shadows, finding you those informational interviews, helping you identify the certifications that are of value, and then moving you up throughout your lifetime, throughout the lifetime of your career and providing financial, academic, and, 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 and various wraparound services and supports. I can't say enough about it. Um, so if, if you happen to have a disability, um, there's a great program out there for you and will help you navigate the entire process. Yeah, and I think we're just scratching the surface, as Mike said. I mean, there there are just so many resources. And so on the financial aid side, one, one that's really important, I think, for folks to know is that if your family makes $75,000 or less as a household income, you can go to CCV tuition-free. So you can get your associate degree at CCV, transfer somewhere else if you'd like, or stick with that um, in, you know, free. And, and that's, I think, about half of the families in Vermont qualify for that. So it's a really tremendous benefit, maybe even more than half now. Um, but so there's all sorts of aid opportunities that I think we've, we've mentioned. Um, but there are also so many supports like HireAbility, like the Vermont Student Assistance Corporation, like VDAL. And I just want to say it's complicated to navigate that web. And so we've tried to make it simpler on My Future VT. So if you go to myfuturevt.org, get support, and then there's a database of, um, of the resource support. So I think it says uh, search support services. And you can go in there. And, and look through, you can actually filter based on what you identify as. So I am, uh, I think it's younger, you know, I may be in high school, uh, I may be older, I may be identify as a person of color, or as LGBTQ. Um, and those, you can then get a kind of a, um, a filtered list of opportunities and support services that will work for you. And so these are real life human beings who can support you along the way in some form. And so if you go to the site, you can get a sense of just how these people might be able to support you and then link over to their websites or, or, or give, a, give a telephone number or an email address. Um, so all sorts of different opportunities and, and supports out there. All righty. Um, you know, we have um, for families with us, and we have about two minutes. If anyone wants to ask any questions, they can post it in the chat and we can ask it. And I'll just give about, you know, 10, 15 seconds. And then otherwise we'll wrap this up. And yeah, does that sound okay, Susie and everyone? Okay. Well, we're perhaps waiting. I would just be remiss if I didn't say place to get assistance is your school counselors at CVU. They are absolutely top notch and, uh, and they're here for you and, and they can help point you in the right direction. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, Michael, Brandon, Tom, for your insights and expertise. Um, I know our family, students and the CVU community is greatly appreciative for your time and for taking, yeah, taking time out of your evening to answer our questions and um, yeah, and we look forward to continuing this um, connection and relationship with you all. And um, yeah, Susie, I don't know if you have anything else to share or add. Just that we will be posting this presentation on the website. So um, it will be accessible. Um, we have last year's up there too. So it'll be accessible, you know, in the, for the next couple of years. And, um, and we thank you again for all your expertise. It's really an exciting time for young Vermonters. And, um, and we appreciate you sharing some of your knowledge. Thank you very much for having us. It's great to be here. Looking forward yeah, to it again next year. Yes. Thanks all. Take Thank care. You. Everyone. Bye. Yes. Take care. Bye. Gary, are you there? Yes. Okay. Are we streaming still? Or are we done? I am ending the stream now. Okay. Great. And then there are